I'm at a gypsy. You've worked on the bike a lot. Like you were very meticulous with testing. Like where did that come from? Like was that something you just always were into as a kid or it was part of this like thinking process that you would go through? No, I was I, I, I wasn't picky in the initial part of my career. I, I got. That sickness happened down the track. It happened. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, uh, it, it, you know, you, you, I think how it, ha- you know, you get a bike and you get it set up and it, and you know, it works almost perfect everywhere, you know, and, and that, that almost ruins you. Cause then all of a sudden mm. now you, now you're like going to the next year and you're on the same bike and all of a sudden you're, you're missing the mark and it's like, well, wait a minute, I know we could get it this good, but we're making changes every single races. And that, I think, I just came to the point, especially into the on the 450, I mean, the, the, you're going to make changes every single race. It, the thing is, is so hard to make perfect everywhere. I mean, you're not going to um, make it perfect, that is. So I just kind of came to the, the point, where like, you know what, when it comes time to race, I you know, there's a give and there's a take, there's a compromise here or there, you make a change, it, make this a little bit better. What can I live with? What can I live without? And I will say at the end of the day, I mean, sometimes you miss the mark as the, you know, with the whole team. And sometimes it's, uh, the bikes just ain't going to work, but over 50% of the time, the bike's probably not going to be feeling good somewhere. And it's not, Mm. you know, it's just, it's just, it's a different animal that wears a guy out in the 450 class because two fifties, you can, you can overpower it. Yeah. There's just a bigger window Four fifties it's not that way. And I don't care what you say. There's no 450 out there that anybody's like, wow, this thing's amazing. You know, that it's so perfect. There's no flaws. Like it's just, and I think if you believe that in your head that there's this perfect, then it's the you know mental spiral. Like you're going to be, you're not going to be confident in your setup. You're going to be always searching. But for, I guess to answer your question, yeah, I, I just, I started getting picky (laughs) <laughs> and, um, and, and I think there's a time and a place, right? Like, Hey, like we, we can, I always liked, we got to a point, um, especially with the 2015 model. And, and when we went into that new model in 2015 with KTM, we, they, they did a good job. They really hit the mark with that. And we had a great off season of testing, but we were off at the first round. So we massaged it a little bit, you know, nothing big. All right, go to the next round. Okay. Come back during the week. We always picked one day, get a little bit better. And then we just kept doing that. And by round six or seven, we stopped like internally testing, switching stuff. And it was like, all right, we went racing with that every single weekend. And so that was, I thought that was a good plan of action. You know, um, you show up to the first round, hey, let's see where we're at. You know, don't, don't, you know, try to reinvent the wheel. And but 450 is just, just, just a diff- different animal. So when you said before, like I've had it that good and it kind of ruined you, what is that good? Uh, well, I got to be careful because so 2010, the, the out, that outdoor bike, um, and I almost have to say that with a grain of salt because, um, like Villo had gotten hurt that year. So I didn't really have like, like Villo, Villo's gnarly outdoors. Right. So like things kind of really went my way in 2010. And so I wasn't, I can't say that I was really pushed a lot. Mm, so you could ride the bike within a pretty comfortable window. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I, you know, if a guy could ride at 80, 85%, 90%, and that's a th- something a rider also needs to take into consideration. It's like, okay, like, and the winds were coming easier, you know, but then in 2011, it, you know, when I have something to compare it with now, all right, yeah, Chad Reed was back. He was at his top level. Uh, Vavilla was back. Now I'm pushing this bike way harder. That setup that worked last year didn't work this year. I remember we we bolted on everything exact same as 2010 and 2011. And I was like, this ain't the same bike that I, <laughs> this ain't it, boys. It, 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 it was, but it was like, this ain't going to get it done. You know? So it's just like, again, to our point earlier, everything just evolved. But what do you look for in like a perfect motorcycle then? Like, what does it feel like when you've got that? Um, I don't, I don't think it's, I think I always just try to set the bike up with what you knew at the track you were at and try to think about hard pack. You got your hard pack tracks. You got your, you know, if it's softer conditions, is it going to have enough hold up? And these things are, you don't want to be too soft or too stiff and you miss the mark. You, you always, you always like, that's a <coughs> battle, but I just would always try to f- get a setup to where I could. Yeah. I feel like I could push it hard for whether it was a super cross, you know, 20 lap main event or, 
two 35 minute motos and the thing wasn't kind of like, I felt like I could really put on a hard charge, you know, and I just tried to keep it at that and try to give my best advice as I could. And I ain't going to pretend it's easy. It's, it's, it's easy for a rider to get a team to spiral. Mm. Like, like you come in and this is off, this is off. And maybe what you're feeling isn't as bad as, I mean, it's like, it's very hard to decipher. I, I even to be on the other side of not not the rider, but like the, the the suspension guy and all that. It's it's tough, you know, and because you know, you're just you're watching this, and you have data now. You have a lot more data. Yeah. So your team of people is just even that much more important. Yeah. yeah. Was there a there a switch for you where you've kind of figured out the balance of like actually working with the team? Because I remember in the first podcast, yeah. You said that there was like a point where you were, it was like, hey guys, get me there. And then you had a switch. You said it, there was like yeah. a thing that Alden said and he was like, hey, like it's kind of up to you to like get there with them. Yeah. I think I, I failed to understand that like I was kind of steering that ship. Mm. Like, and not to say I was the main guy at this place. Just like you, you could, I could be a leader in a sense that I could motivate my guys by like, hey, good job, we're going to get it, let's keep working at this and being positive and keeping the good attitude. Or, and prior to that, man, we'd start testing, you know, day after day, it would start, we'd start spiraling, we're, we're losing, we're, you know, we're losing our way. Then I'd start getting frustrated, everybody else started getting attitude, would start, and then everybody's leaving like, and, and Al then just really helped, and I, I failed to understand that, like, he's like, Ryan, you're, you're not motivating these guys to really come back to want to help you to to get better and to be and that that's when I like it was a, like a light bulb moment like mm. wow like I realized the and the purpose you know I mean outside of just winning a race it's like wow like you can lead this team you, you know realizing this position you're in and 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 um you know um making the most of it so I think I think that that was the point. I tried to start pouring into my team, motivating my guys. And even if it wasn't a great day, hey, you know, we'll, we'll get it. We'll figure it out. I mean, I ain't going to worry or stress about it. Or and, and if we had a great night and everything went smooth, reach out to the guys, like, nice work. This is, you know, credit to you guys. And just, just really, you know, the rider gets all the credit on the night of, you know, but it's like it, there's a whole team of people behind you. So just just try to understand that, that mm. position. and Because racing, it's – you grow up and – it's easy to, it's about me and me winning races. Everybody helped me. And, it, and, it, and you, you get in this like really bad rut. You see it all the time where like, and it kind of becomes miserable as a rider. Mm. Like this isn't, this isn't fun, you know? And, uh, and, and with Eldon kind of opening my eyes up to that, it was like, it made it fun again. It made it enjoyable. Like there's nothing worse than a whole team going to the race and nobody is in flow with each other. You know, they're just at each other. And I mean, there was times me and Roger were, you know, I remember in 13, me and Roger were just, we just were, and, and not to say we lost respect. We were just, we were frustrated. You know, I think mm. we both were trying to find it and it was, it was hard, you know, so, and it's going to be that way. You know, you're going to have years and you're on top and it's easy and it's, but it's those years that aren't going good that are, are really test your, test your character and yeah. what you're made of. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.